Hey, I'll check out my new boat hauling truck. Pretty excited about this thing. Picked it up uh, last week. It's a 1994 GMC Sierra. It's what I drove in high school. Actually, I had a 93 Silverado, but same thing. It was a step side just like this one, but it was red. Pretty clean old truck. I've been wanting something that I can leave hooked up to this boat. Uh, last year, you might have seen the video where somebody broke into my red truck at a boat ramp. So that is definitely a, a more expensive and fancier truck with the dark windows and everything. You can't really tell what's in there. So I'd feel a little bit better with something like this. Not that this is a junker. I mean, this is a pretty nice truck. Keep this hooked up to my boats and take it to some of them sketchier boat ramps. Plus, I uh, feel better about having something hooked up to my boat because it's usually I just leave my boat wide open like that Somebody come take it, but that'd be a little harder to do if you got a half ton truck sitting on it Pretty cool old truck though. I like that color. I already added a slew life sticker to it I think that probably added at least 15 horsepower Now if you remember I started with a basically bone stock 2014 well-built 14 36 I bought it from a buddy of mine actually his brother was in possession of it but a buddy of mine is the one that ordered it he ordered it as a commercial fishing boat and it didn't have a middle seat all it had was the seating spot up front and this back seat I mean that was it I mean I got the trailer the boat which was just John boat green and the motor which the motor looked different too it was basically all original it's a 1998 Mariner 8 horse, two stroke, but uh, the cow was cracked. And I went over fixing that in a video and I painted it. It was originally silver colored. But like I said, the boat was bone stock. I started out with uh, messing with the trailer. I replaced the carpet on all the bunks. And then I went through and moved everything around on the bunks to where it fit better, fit the boat better. And I also did some adjusting on this front stuff, move everything up a little bit so everything would fit better. And then I went in and added foam everywhere I could. And then I used all aluminum in my framing and also on my decks. It is, uh, I used 100. I ended up using two whole sheets of 100 aluminum. And I think it turned out pretty nice. I mean, the top, this front panel, and then this bottom piece and then what I did on the back this seat came like this as a little storage bin and I wanted to keep that so I just added two little extra spots to make it look more like a deck in the back and then of course this little kick out area which serves as my rod holder where the butt end of the rod goes and then I added tubes for your rods to slide in and that uh, seems to be working out very well. And of course, I sanded the boat down and painted it. I used Alumahawk paint, and it turned out pretty nice. I didn't really like the look of it at first because the paint, uh, just, it, you know, I used a roller, and a roller's got a nap to it. And just like rolling a wall, you roll thick paint, and it's going to give it a texture. And that's what it looked like for the first day but then it smoothed out and uh, it's not perfect. It still looks like it has like a lot of orange peel, but it's just from that texture of the roller. But uh, it's a lot better looking now after it sat for a few days. Pushing the front end of the boat, I got a brand new Minn Kota Edge. It's a 55 pound thrust, it's a 12 volt. Man, it really pulls this boat around great. Uh, I took the boat out one time just to you know test everything out make sure everything was gonna work right. The motor ran great. It a little hard to, to start, it's, it's kind of cold natured. But once it gets fired up that first time, man, you don't even, it's like just, you barely pull the pull cord and it fires right up. And of course I trolled around a bit. Just, I wanted to make sure everything fit right up front with the light bars and stuff. And it was easy to deploy the trolling motor and all that was fine. And like I said, man, that, that 55 pound will really pull a 14 foot boat around. And this boat is heavy, I'll, I'll say that. So I'm really happy that I went with that 55 pound versus a 45 pound. Now for the front deck, I added these three hatches. Now this big hatch is just from my batteries. 
I got two brand new Group 27 deep cycle marine batteries. And to charge them, I got a NOCO two bank charger with a, an adapter to it. That way I don't have to run cords in and out of my boat. All I gotta do is plug an extension cord up right here. And that charger's right there. It's already hooked to the batteries. So it's real easy to deal with. And in this hatch, I have access to my fuses, my fuse block, and then the back of all the switches. And then I have a battery disconnect tucked in here. It's easy to get to. And for my switch panel, I have my navigation lights, which are two LED strips for the front. And then of course, I added one for the back and I got it tucked away right here when it's not in use, just so you ain't rolling around in the bottom of the boat or anything. And of course the bilge pump, it's a 750 gallon. And I got interior lights, which is just an LED light strip. I just added on each side of the boat. It actually lights it up pretty nice in here when it's dark outside. And then this, I, I ran out of stickers to put, so I, it was one that said whip light. So whip lights is two little lights that I have inside my hatches. So at nighttime, you'll be able to see whatever's in there. And while I got this hatch open, this hatch is just a storage hatch. See if I can drop y'all in there. I walled it up and put a piece of hydro turf down. So nothing will roll away and everything will be fairly easy to get to. And this other plug right here is a waterproof plug for these bow fishing lights, or at least one side of them. And it's directly wired to the batteries. So you plug it in, it comes on. Now unfortunately, I wasn't able to wire all 10 lights together. So these are split and I gotta carry an extra battery uh, to light those up, which it ain't that big of a deal. There is a way to wire them all together. Possibly fit another battery in this hatch, a small battery, and wire it to that the battery that's already in there and make 24 volts. And I think that would be enough to wire all these lights together and put them all on this plug. But for now, putting that extra battery in ain't that big of a deal. For the depth finder, I have a Hummingbird Helix 5. Uh, now this is basically the fish finder that came off of my big boat. Uh, it went out on me and I went with the Helix 7 and I sent the messed up unit back to Hummingbird and they sent me this one for I think it was like right at 90 bucks after shipping and everything so that's not bad. I think those units are bringing like 300 bucks so saved a couple hundred dollars there. I made a little hatch right here in the back deck. That way I can access the plug of the boat and the bilge pump if I ever have to. I didn't include this in a video, but I got two pieces of angle and braced them together and then attached it to this front panel. And it allows me to slide this piece of three quarter in to stay pretty snug. And basically all that is I made a little T-post so you have a place to hang your bows and it also can fit this gaff hook in there. That way if you're bow fishing, maybe you want to hang your bow up or something instead of laying it down because you are kind of limited in space with a 14 foot boat. It just gives you an option. I haven't really tested it out. And these bow fishing lights are, I think 75 watt nylites, lights, 75, 72 or 75 watt nylites. lights. I, I went over it in the, the video of building the brackets and they, on my fishing trip, I had to go down a really bumpy road and they didn't hold up very well. My bracket didn't. So what I ended up doing is going to Home Depot and I picked up some little T's and L's. As you can see right there is that T and then I have an L right there in that corner and just screwed it all in in all the main corners, which I think these are on the other side. I got one right there. This one did fine. You know, this one's basically just a straight run and then it's got this one little offset piece, but that's that one busted up pretty good. My brazen job didn't work. It really just needs to be welded and you might have to go to somebody that can TIG weld to do it because that stuff's kind of thin. 
but I think it's gonna be fine now that I brace it up the way it is. And while I'm on the subject of these lights, I wanna show y'all how easy it is to take them on and off and how fast I can do it. I'm gonna do it in real time. All you need is a Phillips head screwdriver and it's just four bolts on each side. As you can see, it's basically just a bass boat now. And the way I did all these with the riv nuts, I mean, it's just flush, every one. And then up front, it's just got a little bit of a lip to it. And then the way I've been doing it is just running these bolts right back down in the holes that way you don't lose them and really in the spots where it's hydro turf it's kind of indented in anyways so it's not like anything you're going to stub your toe on you just run them down in there like i said it's flush so that is that i'm really I'm glad I did the bow fishing lights that way. I like how they're low profile and I like how they're easy to take on and off. Um, you know, most people do a whole platform that you step up on, but then you're gonna have to do something with your trolling motor and then you're gonna have to have another person to help you take the platform off if you ever wanna take it off. Now this way, it's simple. I mean, I just did it in what, maybe two minutes. So, real easy to deal with. Now that's it this boat i ain't gonna lie it was a it became a major drag there towards the end it was just just so much work it really was i, I am i'm 100 percent happy with the way it turned out i think it looks good uh i just think it's a really neat versatile boat i really don't have anything that i wish i would have done different on the boat i think i said in one of the earlier videos that when i started this project i had an idea in my head of how i wanted to turn out and i think it's really really close to what i was imagining uh, the motor is a dog on this boat uh, it, motor runs good but this boat is just is too big for it it really needs like a 15 horse i think top speed i got with the tailwind the other day was eight miles an hour uh, so it definitely and you know it'd be perfect for somebody that's at a no wake lake but uh if you're fishing someplace where you got to get somewhere or go a, a far distance before you get to your spot, then you're really gonna want a 15 horse. And if I don't sell it, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm, I thought about just buying a brand new Suzuki or Tahatsu or something. You know, I, I'm not really biased on motors. That's one thing that I don't like about the boat, I guess. Um, but as far as you know, everything else, everything went fairly smoothly. It was just a lot of work, like I said. Now I did build this boat for me 
but I am gonna sell it or try to sell it that way for whatever reason it doesn't sell you know at least I have a boat that I like um, I haven't done the paperwork on how much I got in this boat it definitely was not cheap but I want to say I'm probably in the ballpark for everything from you know what I paid for the boat and down to the very last screw is probably forty five hundred to five thousand dollars which in my opinion is a lot of money and you know that's not any of the labor that I did that was a it's a lot of work I keep saying that because this uh needs to be stressed but anyhow that is the boat and if this is the first video you're watching I got a whole series on and I think this is the 15th or 16th video and uh, step by step of pretty much everything that I did and I am happy to say that it is done uh, like I said if I end up keeping the boat I'm gonna change the motor out I really don't see too much of anything else to do to the boat you know I might run across something tomorrow that I want to add to it but as of right now it's a 100% finished product and I'm ready to enjoy it uh, like I said I, I built it for me I want to do some bow fishing and the time is getting right today is june 2nd uh, we've had a lot of rain here lately and i got a lot of overtime going on at work right now but it is basically the perfect time of year to start slinging some arrows at some fish so looking forward to that i hope you guys enjoyed this series i hope you like the way the boat turned out let me know down in the comments as always i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one got old pupper dog here hey puppy <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs>